Alright, so this is the second tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the arrangement view, how to move tracks into there to get the right sequence you want. We're going to go over uh, quick ways to use variation. And I'm also going to show you how the envelopes work. So we'll start off. These are the tracks that we used in the first tutorial. Should sound pretty much the same. Perfect. And now you can see when we press tab to switch to our arrangement view that it's empty right now. So we, uh, we're going to want to change that. Let's get rid of this audio channel. We're not using that. So we're going to grab this clip for the drum rack, the one that we made, and we're going to drag it in under drums here, drum rack, see? And let's just uh, lengthen that to, say, 13 bars here, since we're not going to be making a very long song at all, just a tutorial. And this is your loop function here if you were to turn loop on. Well, we're not going to use that at all yet. We'll get into that later. If you do want to use it, that's the button to activate the loop. All right, so now we're going to get our uh, sub bass in. And let's say we want this to start on the fifth bar right there and go right till the end. So we got sub bass. And uh, if we play from here, we're going to turn this red button off. If we play it with the red button, it's going to go uh, faded and it means that we're still playing everything from here. So we want to turn that off and see how it stops everything. Now, when we play, we're just going to hear what we've actually put in our arrangement view. So let's skip ahead. So that's when that'll come in. All right, and uh, that's a bit sudden. We'll change that in a little bit. First, let's get the rest of these in. For these two layers, we're just going to put them in right there, just like the base. And we want them to come in together, considering that we're layering them over top of each other. And there they are right there in their channels. So now we wanted to have this bass come in a bit more subtle, so we're going to use an envelope to do that. We're going to, we, it's, already, it's already set to the default track volume, and that's going to be perfect for what we're doing. We're going to create a little node here, because that's when we want it to be at full volume. Then a node at the beginning, but we're going to drop this down to basically nothing, we'll say minus 40. And now if we play from the beginning, it's just hardly, hardly audible in the background. But as it builds, and there we're at full volume. Okay. So now we're going to get into a different kind of envelope. And these are still the basic envelopes for your, uh, within the mixer. So we're not getting into the audio effects yet. Those will have a whole lot of different envelopes. And that's when it gets really interesting. We're going to do some panning with these two, and uh, panning just sort of uh, is the ratio of which side of the speaker uh, it's going to play out of. So let's uh, start it off, say, 30 right for the keys, and we'll go 30 left for the keys. And now for our strings, we'll do the exact opposite so that we don't sort of, it's still pretty even. So basically, we're still getting the same amount of volume. It's just going to be the different, the different, uh, the different instruments coming in through the different uh, speakers, and then they'll switch. When we get to the middle, it's going to be centered again, and then go the other way. So if you got headphones, you'll be able to hear that difference. If you got speakers and they're pretty good quality, you'll also be able to hear that. And that's just to show you how to do panning. You can pan however you want to do your tracks. But uh, next we'll get into some variation. So for this we're going to press tab, get back to our view here. And the quickest way to get variation, we've already got our old pattern here. Instead of starting something completely new, we're going to use the duplicate function. And it's very useful. So it's important to remember the shortcut, command D, while we've got the, the track uh, highlighted. And there we go, we got a second one right there. But you're going to lose track of uh, which ones are which, so it's important to uh, label them and then make it a lot easier in the long run. So if we're going to change this up a bit, we'll, uh, we'll move it down to 16th notes. And let's just throw in, uh, let's see, let's throw in some extra hi-hats right there. Another way is that you can just shorten it and then duplicate function where it's with notes as well. Throw in another kick there, you want a kick here, we'll see how this works, and we'll just solo that. Alright, so that's going to work. We're going to just stick with that for now. 
And now what we want to do is we want to get that into here somewhere, and why not put it where all the other instruments come in. So we'll shorten this old uh, variation, press tab to get back, grab the new one, put it in, and you can even see that these notes have uh, changed here. If you really zoom in, then you'll really be able to tell. So that's useful, but it's good to label it because then it's right there for you to see, especially when it gets more complicated. So let's see how that sounds from the beginning there. Again, red button off. And we'll turn the solo off. All right, let's see how it sounds just getting into it. You'll hear the variation change. So that's the quickest way to make variations, just by starting a new track. And now there's another way to vary your tracks, and that's using an envelope. And there's also a hidden envelope in here that you may not have noticed, this little E here. And it's very useful because if you want to have an envelope that uh, sort of moves with the bar, instead of s sort of doing it with every bar here, you know, shortening it, you can actually do it down here. So we're going to grab, let's say, the pitch. And it's going to be really simple what we're going to do. We want the beginning to be sort of zero where it was. And we'll just bring the pitch up a little bit as we go. And now let's solo that, see how it sounds, if it's what we want. Maybe a little bit more. So you can really tell by the snare there that it goes up in pitch quite a bit. So let's take the solo off, and now when we play it, we'll be able to hear that pitch. And you can see that every bar, it loops back to the beginning of the envelope. So it's a whole lot easier than, say, grabbing uh, two pieces, bringing them up, and then grabbing this and bringing it back down really makes it a lot easier than doing that for all of them, even if you copy and paste them. So we'll undo that by Command Z, because we've already done it. And that's pretty much everything for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to get into instrument racks, how to set up your filters and your delay, uh, just any kind of audio effects, uh, filter delay, compressor limiter, your reverb, how to group tracks, and we'll even get into these MIDI effects here that I've got open. Uh, so that's it for now. Stay tuned and we'll have a bit more next time.